Have you ever had one of those days when you're down at the beach, you jump out of the water and you can't spot your own towel because it looks like everyone else's? Well, I'm going to solve that problem by turning my towel into a big, colourful watermelon. What you're going to need is a 100% cotton white towel and make sure it's nice and wet, some rubber gloves, two buckets, some non-iodized sea salt, some fabric dye in green and red, a stirring stick or a big spoon, permanent marker, scissors and some rubber bands. Now the first step is separate your towel into three sections using two rubber bands. So there'll be a red section, a white section and a green section. So we'll just fold it in half lengthways and then in half again and we'll work with it like that. Now we'll tie our first band on. Now you don't want too much green skin so go about 30 centimetres down and then with the second band leave a bit of white space. So tie about maybe 10 centimetres under that. To dye the top part of your towel green, you'll have to add the dye to some warm water and give it a good stir. Don't forget to put your gloves on at this point because this dye does stain. When picking your colours for your watermelon towel, think about the colours of the skin and the flesh. So with the green, I've chosen a nice deep emerald green, and for the red, I've chosen a bright scarlet. When adding your towel to the green dye, make sure you only go up to the first rubber band. There we go. Once it's in, let it develop for about 30 minutes. Okay, so that's been soaking for half an hour. So time to give it a big squeeze, get all the excess dye off, change your gloves and repeat on the other side with the red dye. Now it's really important to change your gloves from green to red because it stops turning your towel brown. Okay, time to mix the red dye. And once again, give it a good stir. Now you're gonna need quite a lot of water for the red bucket because you're dyeing about two thirds of your towel all the way up to that second rubber band. Now we'll just leave that in the dye for 30 minutes to let the colour develop. Then we'll wring it out and hang it out on a washing line to dry overnight. Now I've cut the rubber bands off the towel and let it dry overnight. Then I hose it off to get any excess dye off and let it dry again. Now it's time to draw the pips on. So I'm just using a black permanent marker and I'm going to draw an oval shape with a pointed end about 5 to 10 centimetres long and then colouring it in. Now you want to do this sporadically over the towel, not too close together and only on the red bit. Now the final step is to wash your towel in the washing machine all by itself with some non-iodized salt. That's going to help your dye set. The best part is you'll never lose your towel again. Submarine 467, coming into action. Submarine 697, come in. Roger that, Submarine. Hey guys, to complete this Gedardi mission today, we're gonna need a potato, 
peeler, a knife, chopping board, some baking powder, balsa wood, a tube, and an old fish tank or anything that can hold water really. Okay, first step, we're gonna peel the potato down to size. So just grab your peeler, always be careful. Take the skin off the potato. Just keep going round and round until all the skin's off. So it's a nice smooth surface and it also will keep the water nice and clean. A knife can be a bit sharp, just grab an adult. Make a bit of a rectangle shape, a block. So just cut those curved sides off. We're making the potato a bit smaller just so it sinks slowly. Okay, the next step is to make the shape of your submarine. With the peeler, just take off those corners and you can make any shape you like, whatever you imagine your submarine to be. When we poke our tube through the potato, we wanna make sure it's hollow so we remove a piece. So we're gonna poke three holes, one at each end and one in the middle. One, one in the middle and another one on the end. And there you should have three holes. And now carefully with your knife, we're gonna widen one end. With the middle hole, make a bit of a cone shape. And once you've done that, it's time to grab the balsa wood and make the periscope. And that's what the sailors use to see out of the top of the water. Cut a piece of the balsa, about two centimeters long. Balsa is just a really soft timber that we use for arts and crafts. And again, with the balsa, we're gonna use this sheet and cut a square out of that. And then in the middle of that square, just poke a hole through it. And that's gonna hold our periscope in place. Grab your two centimeter length, just poke the dowel through the sheet, and then we'll put this into the middle hole. And that is gonna be the top of your submarine. Now we've got our periscope in, it's time to test whether or not it floats. And if it sinks too fast, it means the potato's too big. Let's put it in the water and see if it sinks slowly. Okay, so that sank really fast. What we have to do is cut some of the potato off and that's gonna make it lighter and sink more slowly. So just shave a little bit off and test it again. And when it's sinking nice and slowly, that's when you've got it right. Now this is all just trial and error. Your submarine's not gonna look the same. Let's test that again. I think that's pretty good. So just put some baking powder into the middle hole. That's gonna make a bubble to bring the potato back to the surface. And now let's try it. And there we go, the submarine is happily floating and ready for its submarine mission. My name is Kat and I'm a nail artist and today I'm going to teach you how to give your friends some serious nail envy with a glitter fade nail. What you're going to need is some clean cotton, some nail polish remover, a sponge, a glitter and a pink nail polish, a base coat, a top coat, a wooden stick and a hand. So first you need to clean the nail with a clean cotton pad and some nail polish remover. So next we'll be putting a base coat the base coat protects the nail from staining. And wait a few seconds for it to dry. Next, you can start with your first layer of the pink nail polish. I'm using this pale pink because the glitter will stand out nicely on it. And wait for it to dry. Apply a second coat so you can't see the natural nail underneath. Now for the glitter fading, you'll need the nail polish to be completely dry before you start sponging. Otherwise, it'll smudge. You need to apply glitter directly onto the sponge and then just dab it lightly onto the nail. Tap lightly so that you don't ruin your hard work. Now clean off the edges with some nail polish remover, the wooden stick and some cotton. And lastly, we're using a top coat to keep it lasting longer and looking glossy. And voila, go forth and sparkle bright.
Some ladies like diamond necklaces, but I myself prefer crabs. I'm gonna show you how to make your very own crab necklace. All you need is a crab toy, or any old toy you have lying around the house, a pair of scissors, and some ribbon. The first thing you wanna do is cut two lengths of ribbon. Now, you can make them longer or shorter depending on how long you want the necklace to be. Cut about this much, I think, because I need space to tie it. So you want both lengths of the ribbon to be about the same size and try to pick a colour for the ribbon that matches the crab. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is tie the ribbon to the crab. I'm going to tie it just below his arm like that. His first claw there. Just give it a few knots. It's underneath the body. There we go. And do the same thing on the other side. Tie a double knot and then snip off the excess ribbon. And there you go, your very own crab necklace. And don't forget, you can do this with anything. You can find old toys and turn it into something fashionable. I know I do. and I'm a professional pastry chef. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful watercolor work of art that's good enough to eat. For that, we're gonna need some food coloring, 175 grams of caster sugar, 150 grams of egg white, that's roughly four eggs, 300 grams of unsalted butter, 50 grams of chopped white chocolate, some vanilla paste, a thermometer, a bowl in a saucepan on a stove top. We're gonna need a mixer, microwave, a whisk, and a spoon. Now to decorate the cake, we're gonna need a palette knife and a scraper. Paper towel, extra spoons and bowls. First, let's start making the ice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now to start, we're gonna combine the sugar and the egg whites in a bowl. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dissolve this sugar so for this, we need some simmering hot water. You just want to keep that at medium heat. You don't want that too hot or boily. Make sure you have an adult with you to help you to use this stove. Grab your whisk, and we're just going to combine the egg whites and the sugar and wait for the sugar to dissolve. That would be 60 degrees. You don't want it hotter than that, otherwise your egg whites going to start to cook. If you don't have a thermometer, what you can do, you can just touch the mix and rub in your finger. If you don't have any grain sugar, that should be ready. While you're mixing, you don't want to go too crazy. You don't want to make a meringue. So you just have to combine the whites and sugar and slowly, slowly, we're getting that. Okay, when we reach the temperature we want, we need to move straight away into the mixer and just turn the mixer on and keep whisking. We're really looking for a meringue consistency. That should take around five to 10 minutes. You just want the meringue to cool down before we add the butter. What we can do while we're waiting is just melt a little bit of this chocolate. So put in the microwave for one minute and then just give a good stir, another 30 seconds. You just want to melt the chocolate, you don't want it too hot. Mmm, my meringue looks ready. Okay, it's nice and fluffy. You just touch a little bit, it's not hot, so we're ready to go. What we're gonna do, check the chocolate. Yeah, chocolate nice and melts. We just keep this on the side. Next step, we're gonna start adding the butter. Adding the butter really slowly. Get a spoon. That's why we need to cool down the meringue. If the meringue's too hot, your butter will melt. So if you see you adding the butter and your meringue gets too runny, that's because your meringue was too hot. Good tip, huh? Turn the mixer on again, medium speed, and start adding the butter. Let's put it in. Just gonna stop the mix. If you see some of the butter are just stuck on the edges, what we're gonna do is just have to scrape them down. 
so they can go through the mix and everything is going to be one beautiful buttercream. All right, back to me then. If your buttercream is split a little bit during the process, that's normal. Don't freak out, just keep going. All right, I put all my butter in. So what you're looking for, it's a very light, yellow, fluffy, yummy buttercream. Next step, we're just gonna keep whisking in low speed and start adding our chocolate. You could do that with dark chocolate as well, or milk chocolate. Once the chocolate in, we're gonna add some vanilla paste. Vanilla paste is really yummy with white chocolate and butter. I would say a half teaspoon. Or if you want more, you can put one teaspoon. You can use different flavors as well, salted caramel. And that's it, once combined, we're ready to go. Let's decorate our cake. Now it comes the fun part. I divide my buttercream in four different bowls because I'm using four different colors. You can use as many as you want. It's your option, it's your cake, it's your art. Another fun thing to do here is if you just have one coloring, you can make a light blue color, for example, or you can go a dark blue color, you can make a medium one, and they all gonna combine together when you're applying the cake. They don't have to have all the colors in the world, just go with one, and you still have fun. So what you need to do, you're just gonna start slowly add your coloring into your mix. Don't go crazy and put all in once, just go slowly, check your color. If you're happy with, you stop, otherwise just keep adding and keep folding gently. Don't whip too crazy. Now it's time for decorate. Okay, for that we're gonna need a cake. We're gonna need the powder knife and our scraper. And our beautiful four coloring buttercream. So what I have here, it's a cake already made. Banana cake smells delicious. I have my cake in four layers. Each layer I have around two centimeters. And then I have the filling and then another cake, the filling, another cake. And you let this set for, I would say 15 to 30 minutes in the fridge. So when we apply the colors, your cake doesn't move around. Underneath the cake, what I have is a turntable. Turntable is really good to apply these techniques. If you don't have a turntable, don't worry, I have a good tip for you. You can use a piece of baking paper, place your cake on top, and then you just spin the baking paper underneath. So that will give you the same movement. Then I have a non-slip mat. So the cake just stays stable, doesn't go everywhere. And I place my cake on uh, cake boards. Uh, my cake is a six inches and my cake board is eight inches. And we wait for the creating. I'm gonna start with the yellow icing. So with my palette knife, just gonna get a little bit and then you're just gonna place in the cake in small areas. And then we're gonna jump to the green icing and then so on and so on. Okay guys, you can apply the coloring the way you like. Play with the four colors, fill in the gaps. Just don't forget to leave some space for the last color. Okay, don't worry if your colors are blended together. That's gonna happen anyway. So just fill in the gaps as much as you can. Okay, I think I'm done. So let's just blend the colors together. Get your longest scraper. If you don't have one, you can have a ruler at home, just clean. And what you need to do is keep your scraper straight and it's just gonna spin your cake around. Slowly, slowly, scraping the buttercream. Halfway through, you just need to clean that. Just have another bowl next to you, just make it easier. All right, and then another halfway through. Oh, look at that, looking beautiful. Okay, so you can see a little bit of bubbles here. It's fine, you can leave it like that. But I'm just gonna show you how to fix in case you wanna be perfectionist like I am. So you just have to apply one color that you choose, just put a little bit in and scrape again. I'm happy with that, so we're gonna apply the same technique on the top of the cake. All right, let's start with the yellow again. Just finish with the purple. Now you scrape again, 
You can do one big movement first. Yes, clean your scraper. And then we do the same thing we did before. Just adding a little bit more icing just to smooth the edges. All right, I think we got it. Our watercolor cake. I hope you enjoy, guys. I had a lot of fun. 